I'm joined today by Grace Hayek from Glencoe Public Library and Raz Topolsky from Vernon area. Becky is known as Clean Mama. We'll discuss tips from her new book, Clean Mama's Guide to a Peaceful Home, Effortless Systems and Joyful Rituals for a Calm, Cozy Home. The book was just published about three weeks ago. Congratulations, Becky. Thank you. It's, it sounds like just the thing that we could all use right now. Signed copies of Becky's books are available from the bookstall in Winneka. A link to purchase Clean Mama's Guide to a Peaceful Home can be found in the chat box on your screen. The bookstall will include an autographed book plate with each copy that you buy from the store. We'll conclude today's event with a question and answer session. You can ask your questions by typing them in the chat box and the chat icon is located on the bottom of your screen. Please note that as an attendee today, your cameras and microphones are turned off. We will record today's presentation and you'll receive a link to the presentation in an email sent next week. Now I'd like to turn it over to Grace from Glen Glencoe Public Library to introduce our speaker. Hi everyone. We're so pleased today to welcome Becky Rappenchuk who joins us from her clean and peaceful home in the Chicago area. Becky is not only a cleaning guru, but also a wife and mom to three, an entrepreneur and a former art teacher. Her blog, Clean Mama, has a following over, of over 20 million readers. She also advises some of the leading lifestyle brands on how to clean up life's little and big messes. These brands include Martha Stewart, S.A. Johnson, Home Depot, Dyson, and Scotch Bright, among others. And in addition, she is the, the go-to cleaning expert for Better Homes and Gardens, Real Simple, The New York Times, Bon Appetit, HGTV Magazine, and many others. With all the spare time that this leaves her, Becky has authored four books on cleaning, the newest of which was published on December 29th by HarperCollins. As Beth mentioned, it's, it's titled Clean Mama's Guide to a Peaceful Home, Effortless Systems and Joyful Rituals for a Calm and Clean, clean Cozy Home. The book is about her game-changing game method for freeing up both mental and physical space to help us find joy and to make our homekeeping routine effortless. Her philosophy is that by pairing up simple systems, how we get things done so that they become automatic, with joyful rituals, that is tasks that bring calm and happiness, we can feel more at home, more at peace in our homes. And there couldn't be a more perfect moment for that than right now. Becky, thank you for, for sharing your domestic wisdom with us today. Um, you can go ahead. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here with you all and share some tips and tricks for my latest book. Um, this is it. It's Clean Mama's Guide to a Peaceful Home. Um, please ask questions as I'm going if you have them, and then I, we can answer at the end and kind of sum everything up. But I'll tell you a little bit about how I started. I started my website Clean Mama back in 2009 and I was just wanting to share my tips and tricks with whoever wanted to listen to them. It was kind of the wild wild west of blogging at that point and it was fun to put something on a social media site and for every single one of your followers to actually see it. So that was kind of when I started um, sharing um, my tips and my routine. My routine is where everything really took off and my routine is uh, like a cleaning routine and it's a, a way to keep your home clean with minutes a day so you can enjoy other things in your life. I talk about it in, um, in my book, you can see it all over my website as well, but it's definitely the first method that I began sharing with the world. So I thought I would take you through a little bit about the, of, of the book and then through that, I'm gonna be sharing tips and tricks so that you're gonna, while you're here today, you're going to find out some uh, different ways to do things and maybe take some things home for yourself too, to apply in your own home. So this book is, it looks like a regular book, but it has a workbook feel to it. It's designed so that you can work in your home as you're going through it, taking notes, writing things down, coming back to it, using it as a reference. That's how I wanted it to be designed. I call it a love letter for your home because it's intended to be something that really helps you enjoy being in your home more every day. So um, through the, at the beginning of the book, it's 
part one is all about finding time and creating routines. And that is to me, one of the harder things for us as a society to come up with is the time to actually be cleaning and taking care of our homes because everything else is, it takes center stage. This is, I know this is difficult and, but right now, especially since we're home and our homes are now our restaurants and our schools and our gyms and our workplaces, everything is at home. So this is especially important because you need to come up with systems and ways that you're going to do things in your home to make it run a little bit more smoothly and make it more enjoyable. So I talk about what kind of home do you want? You take some time to actually think through what you want your home to look like and what you want it to feel like. It doesn't matter if it's a 500 square foot apartment or a 5,000 square foot house, you are looking for ways to make your home work for you. Um, one of the main things that I talk about in the book are is a pain point task and a happy task. So we're pairing those things together. The pain point task is something that you don't like to do. And the happy task is something that you do enjoy doing. And so you are putting those two things together in a way to make it a little bit more enjoyable. For instance, I, I always, I'm not a big fan of unloading the dishwasher. And so I pair that with making my coffee in the morning and I kind of race myself to unload the dishwasher as quickly as I, as possible while my coffee is brewing. And it's about two or three minutes is all that it takes. I know it feels like much longer, <laughs> but it's pretty quick. And then by the time the dishwasher is unloaded, my coffee has brewed. I can go sit down and relax before the kids come down and everything and um, enjoy my cup of coffee. So the dishwasher is unloaded. That was my pain point task. I paired it with a happy task, which for me is drinking coffee. It can be, you know, any number of things, but that's something that I enjoy. And I put those two things together. And now every morning while I'm making my coffee, I have the habit of unloading the dishwasher. So I talk about looking for things in your home or in your life that you don't enjoy doing and put it with something that you do. So if you don't enjoy folding clothes, maybe you're going to put on a movie or um, listen to a book on tape or a podcast or call someone on the phone. So you're pairing that, low, uh, that folding laundry with something that, that's more enjoyable. The time goes by more quickly. It doesn't seem quite as full of drudgery and it's an easier um, thing to do. So that's the pain point and happy task. That's something that we discuss um, quite a bit in the book as well as finding time to actually do these routines. Um, you're going to find that in the book, I talk about um, putting routines to work for you. So making your home more efficient and um, actually putting things in systems and routines in place so that it's easier to enjoy your home. Um, and then I also talk about some peaceful home guidelines, things that you can do that will make your home feel more peaceful. I don't necessarily recommend implementing them all at once, but simple things like if you take something out, you put it away. Dealing with clutter daily is another um, thing that helps with a peaceful home. But throughout the book, you're going to find different recommendations and suggestions that are designed to help you feel um, empowered to take care of your home in a little bit of a different way. Um, so then part two of the book is the clean home reset. And that is the bulk of the book. So if, this is the second half. And this is where we're going room by room or area by area through our homes. And we are figuring out how to make it more efficient, run more smoothly. And that is the, um, that's where I'm going to spend most of my time today is talking about different areas of your home and giving you some um, tips for that. So in the, in the book, you're going to find a clean home reset checklist. And this checklist goes through room by room, very specific things to concentrate on. For instance, in the kitchen, it's storage and organization, food storage, meal planning, grocery shopping, food prep. So we talk about those main areas in the book. Um, in bathrooms, it's storage and organization, paper products, towels and linens, toiletries and makeup, cleaning supplies medicine and first aid, we go through all those areas um, and more, but you're, it's like a baseline for you to be working through um, 
your home. So in the kitchen, I thought I would share some tips on that. Um, uh, there are two kitchen sections and one is more storage and organization based and then one is more meal planning, meal prep based. Um, in the kitchen storage and organization, um, I talk a lot about things that kind of hold us up from our kitchen feeling clutter free or like it's easier to um, cook and clean up a, a kitchen. Well, there's a couple things um, in storage or in organization that are really helpful. And the one and the main one is based on zones. So in your kitchen, if you think about putting things into zones, it's going to make it more efficient. For instance, if you drink coffee and or tea, having your coffee and tea, your coffee pot, your teapot or your mugs, cups, whatever, um, tea bags, coffee, all in a general vicinity, that's going to make it easier for you to make your coffee. You're not gonna be going from one end of your kitchen to the next, it's all right there by your coffee pot or by um, your tea kettle and you can um, take care of that um, part of your home a little bit easier. Another thing is if you have a dishwasher or your sink or both, um, putting those near, putting your dishes near them is going to be really helpful because when you unload the dishwasher or put dishes away from the sink, you are going to be putting, you want to put them like essentially be able to see them in one place and then put them right up above or below um, where you're standing so that you're not having to take a stack of dishes to another area of your kitchen. Um, when you load and unload the dishwasher, having tricks, like I said before, with my coffee brewing, um, if you have a place to put dishes, if they're still wet from the dishwasher and let them dry, you know, a sink, a sink tray is always helpful for that. Um, if you have like mail on the counter or kitchen clutter on the counter, I always encourage you doing like a complete uh, counter declutter, like take everything off your counters, like clean the surface. I recommend using dish soap and warm water with a sponge or a dishcloth and wiping everything down really well. And then looking, doing an edit of all those items, looking at what you have, looking at um, what you use daily, keeping the daily things out. But if there are things that you're, you keep a blender on your counter and you use it twice a month, look for another place to store that. If you um, use your coffee pot daily, of course that needs to stay out. I, um, I would always argue for that as a coffee lover, <laughs> but um, I think that the, the main thing is really looking at what you have and deciding what you want to keep out and um, on those counters. I find personally that when you clear a space and just let it have some room to breathe, essentially, that's really helpful to see how it makes you feel when you put things back. So sometimes if I can, I will leave things off of surfaces for 24 hours, just so I can kind of keep looking back at it visually and deciding what needs, what I really want to go back and what I want to keep, um, keep there. I recommend going through your dishware, dishware, seeing if you have too many, not enough, kind of deciding what you need to keep. If there are big bowls that you have on hand that you no longer use, maybe pack those away or donate them, give them away to someone that, um, that would enjoy them. So making sure that you are taking into account all those little storage areas, even down to the utensil drawers and trays, because that's helpful too. And it's also helpful when you think about organizing too. I always think about how, if you, if you know what, um, what items go into, like for a silverware tray, for instance, or a cutlery tray, there are six slots and, or eight slots, whatever yours has. Um, but each one is for a specific um, piece of silverware. And that's helpful because then you know where it goes when you return it. And then you also um, can put it, it can be put away easily. You know, if you're out of something, it's quick, a quick visual. It was really helpful for that. So when you're organizing things, think about it like that. You wanna make sure that you are putting things away in a way that is easy to find and locate and kind of like a silverware tray. 
so those are, those are just some tips for like kitchen organizing. Um, I, I talk about like spices and a spice drawer and, or a spice cupboard cabinet. We talk about, um, like knife blocks. I mean, everything that you can think of, like from a kitchen, I talk about different like ideas and different ways to do things. Um, one last tip on the kitchen for something that's been really helpful for me for organizing um, is to have, to separate out my like baking and cooking supplies. So in my pantry, I have a large turntable. I have two large turntables and they're essentially side by side. And uh, the left-hand one is all baking related. So like cocoa and brown sugar, um, cornstarch, powdered sugar, baking things. And then on the right-hand side, I have cooking items like um, sea salt and um, avocado oil, olive oil, those sorts of vinegars, that, that sort of thing. So then they're both in the same area, in the same zone, it's like cooking and baking zone, but I have those separated out just for ease. They're easy to grab with the, the um, turntable. You can store more, you can see everything by just a quick spin. And it just, it makes it really easy. Um, I also recommend putting like the everyday spices on your counter. If you have a counter space, you can put it on a butcher block or um, in a, a cute dish, but you can put like your olive oil, um, salt, pepper, garlic, things that you use, have and have it next to your stove so that you can access it really quickly and easily while you're cooking. Um, so these are just some ideas for you with the kitchen. We also go on to um, talking about the best way to clean in the kitchen, how to quickly clean your kitchen. One of the best tips, I think, for keeping your kitchen clean is to have a damp, um, I call them a bar mop towel. Uh, it's just a cotton towel that you um, have it, you know, dampen with water, keep it at your, at the stove while you're cooking. You can use it to wipe down counters if you have a little bit of free time, or if you have a spill as you're cooking, you can quickly um, clean that up. So, okay, so that's the kitchen organization. Then we also go into, um, um, I, I will share one more thing. I will talk about my nightly sink scrub, which is probably one of my favorite routines. And it, ha it combines that happy task with the pain point. The pain point being, I'm not a big fan of doing dishes. And while I can get the family to help and clear the table and we do all that and we put the dishes away together and you know, all that. But at the end of the night, I do a nightly sink scrub and it is kind of like a little bit of zen at the sink. <laughs> and all it is, is I take a mason jar and I put baking soda and um, essential oil in it. I do about 30 drops total. Uh, I do about 20 drops of lemon, 10 drops of clove. You can mix up whatever essential oils you have or whatever scent you like. But then I mix that with a table knife and I just sprinkle a little bit in my um, wet kitchen sink when there's nothing in it. I add a couple squirts of dish soap, scrub it with a scrub brush or a sponge, rinse it, dry it. And now I have a nice clean sink that's ready for the next day. It also fits really nicely in with that morning routine coming down to the kitchen. The kitchen is clean rather than having last night's dishes waiting for me. It's a nice clean kitchen counter, kitchen area and um, it's ready for the day. So that nightly sink scrub is, I enjoy doing it. It smells good. It, it's just a nice little ritual and it makes cleaning up the, the um, kitchen at the end of the evening a little bit more enjoyable. So that's another pain point and happy task for me. Um, another thing that I, we talk about is in the kitchen, meal planning, grocery shopping, and prep, this is a harder thing for most people. And it's because it's time consuming. You have to think ahead and you have to figure out what you want to plan. Then you have to do the grocery shopping and it's all kind of like exhausting and a lot. So I always say to, to make it a little bit more um, simple, you're going to want to come up with a day that you shop. I, my day is Fridays. 
of course, if we need groceries in, before a Friday, we will get them. But um, Friday is my grocery day. And it also is like the meal planning day. And I also add in cleaning out the refrigerator. So I've kind of put all those things together as like, and I've grouped those. The, uh, the meal planning is easy when you are go look, looking at your fridge, deciding what you have to, to buy. Just do a quick meal plan for the week or in the next few days, however, whatever works for you. And then before I go grocery shopping or put in my grocery order, I will wipe out the refrigerator. And that by doing that weekly, the refrigerator never gets um, gross. And it's just, it's easier. We're not wasting food because we know what's in there as well. Um, so th those are just kind of, kind of how that works. I would encourage you to think of a day that works. The reason I chose Fridays is it was always, even when I was um, teaching, I would come home. You could usually leave a little early on a Friday so I could do my grocery shopping on my way home. And I always find that Fridays is a really good day for grocery stores to be stocked well. And I don't like shopping on the weekends because it feels like it's crowded. Everyone else is shopping and stuff ends up being picked over. So Fridays has always worked for me personally, but that's me. You can decide what works best for you um, with that. But it's just a little, like a simple way to do that. I also, in the book, share just, a, I recommend doing like a category shopping list. So you write down things that you need routinely, something that you buy every week. Maybe it's bread or apples or whatever <laughs> it is and put those things down so that you are using that as like kind of a pre-made shopping list. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, and then also having a place for extras. So in your, like in your pantry, if you, especially now with just not going out as much, it's nice to, if I buy something, I might buy two of them. And then I will have like that extra stock, like back stock in my, um, in my pantry or in my garage fridge or whatever, it's um, nice to have that little extra on hand. Um, so if you find something on sale or you know you use it every week, I always say might as well buy two or three and then you can you have that available to you. Um, just even like, this is like just a simple tip, but I put a, um, like a quarter sheet pan in the refrigerator so a baking sheet and you can they're like about this big it's probably um i don't know nine by 13 in size so it's smaller but it has the rims on it and i put um, any meat on that that we um like uncooked meat if i buy it on friday and i'm going to cook it uh, or grill it on saturday we'll put that in the fridge and then that way it stays um off of the shelf from like with contamination, whatnot, and it ends up being a nice, um, easier way to kind of keep that organized. Um, I always, I always recommend if you can divide spaces up in your refrigerator or do it because that way it's going to be easier. Like for instance, those big like fruit and veggie drawers, you can if you can get like something to section it off so you can um, separate out different fruits and vegetables and take them out of the bag. It's going to make it easier to store and you'll see, be able to see exactly um, what you have in your refrigerator as well. Um, so zones and refrigerators are helpful too. Sometimes it might sound like it's a little bit like over the top <laughs> with like organizing, but when you see how simple it is and how much easier it makes your life, just those little tweaks are, are really helpful. Throughout the book, you're going to find these, they're called decision trees at the house. And um, it talks about, like at the top of this one, it says, is meal planning, prep and grocery shopping where you want to implement a change? Yes or no, or maybe. And then you decide, um, like if you were to say yes, it says write down three action steps um, that you can take, like prepping groceries when you get home from the store. And then you can write down an idea that you can use today. So this is a way to really think through the book. I think sometimes when we read uh, like more of a, like a nonfiction 
book, you just kind of just read right through it. This is having you stop and kind of reflect and think through the different areas of your home, of your home as you go. You could, you know, obviously read through it and skip all of that, but you're kind of missing out on the implementation part and where you can, it can help you in your, your own home. So um, the next chapter is bathrooms. In this chapter, I talk about um, how to, like the best way to clean a bathroom. And I will tell you that because I think that that's like a really helpful life skill <laughs> um, that if for, is to clean bathrooms on Mondays. It, Monday is the day that I clean bathrooms. I have a real specific cleaning routine that has a lot of flexibility to it. And I'll share that like more towards the end here, but with the cleaning routine in bathrooms, I, I have four bathrooms in our house and I can do them all in, in 15 minutes. And it's because I do the, I will, I clean them weekly. And because I have a, a system in place to do that. And I'm not like breaking a sweat or anything like that. It is just how you, I, um, I clean them and it's with the system. So what I do is I start with my supplies in a bucket or a cleaning caddy, whatever you like. And I, um, I take a, I use microfiber to clean my bathrooms. I take a microfiber cloth. I spray on it like a, um, my mirror or window cleaner. And then I wipe my, uh, the mirror in the first bathroom. And then I take my all purpose disinfecting cleaner and I spray the entire bathroom down essentially. So I spray the sink, the toilet, the bathtub, the, or shower. Um, I don't do the floors on Mondays. I save those for later in the week as part of my routine, but the, um, then I go to, I, then I put in my, um, my toilet cleaner and go to the next bathroom and I repeat that. And then I go, when I have repeated that in my bathrooms, I go back to the first bathroom. Now I've already wiped down the mirror, but I'm going to wipe down the sink, the toilet and the tub or the shower. I use separate cloths for each of those things. Then I scrub the, the toilet and I um, put the toilet brush under the toilet seat. So it hangs over the toilet and can drip in the, um, the toilet tank. And then I spray it, I spray the brush with hydrogen peroxide to disinfect it, let that sit and dry. I go to the next bathroom and I repeat that wiping the, uh, the sink, the toilet, the tub or the shower and scrubbing the toilet. And after I've repeated that, it, it goes really quickly. You have all of your supplies with you and you are just repeating the same thing over and over. And if you're doing that weekly, you are able to, your bathroom will stay cleaner. It will make it easier to clean every week. So it will take you less time. If you've, if, if you've just, if you're starting it and you say, I'm going to try that on Monday, you, it's going to take you probably longer than 15 minutes to do your bathrooms. Cause you might have some, um, buildup or extra dirt or grime, whatever that you, if you haven't, maybe you haven't cleaned it in a couple of weeks. So that's um, my bathroom cleaning method. I also recommend um, using white towels in the bathroom. It's, they're easy to clean. I use oxygen whitener in my laundry. It's uh, like a bleach alternative. I don't use any bleach. Um, if you have not ever seen me or um, seen my blog, I do talk about natural cleaning and um, using safe products and ingredients so that no one has to wear masks or hazmat suits or anything like that when they're cleaning their homes and it's safe for um, your families. Um, when you have white towels, it has a spa-like feel and um, it matches with any decor and it just looks fresh and um, fresh and clean and that's what you want in a bathroom. Um, let's see. So Another thing that I talk about in the book are like things that we're talking about things that bother you or things that aren't working. Um, sometimes toiletries end up being like all over, or if I know for me personally, I have a hard time putting my, like my makeup back away in the drawer. So like all, or, or my hair stuff, skin stuff, whatever. So I have to like, kind of like remind myself to, put those things away when I'm done using them. Um, and 
I use my, I usually do that while I'm brushing my teeth. So I'll stand for, you know, you're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes. I don't know if I do, it's probably more like a minute, but um, while I'm brushing my teeth, I'll be brushing with one hand and putting things away with the other. That's kind of that pain point and happy task. Now, neither of those things are really um, a happy task, but I know that I can put those two tasks together and um, make it a little bit easier. Um, so once we kind of go to another thing for the bathrooms is like hanging like towels and towel management. And if you have too many towels or towels on the floor, there's always issues with that. So I talk about that in the book as well. Um, recommending, I recommend some kind of a hook or that you can put up where you're going to actually have, um, there's adequate circulation in that area. So the towels can dry in between uses. And, um, and then people always wonder how many towels I recommend per person. And it really depends on how, what your threshold is for washing. I recommend washing towels every other day. So, and then I, as part of my routine, Saturday is sheets and towels day. So that's the day we launder them. So I usually recommend three to four towels per person. Um, some people would go with two, some people would have six, but it, it really, you kind of have to do the math on when you're going to wash them and um, how many days you go between washing them um, that way too. So um, the next section is the bedrooms. And in the bedrooms, we talk about how, uh, like, how a bedroom really affects our, our days. And it's nice to come home or come from your downstairs where you've been working all day, whatever, at the end of the day, and come to a, a, um, a nice, clean bedroom where your bed is made and it feels like a restful place where you want to relax at the end of a day. So the things that tend to be like universal for people is that bedrooms are dusty. Um, they, you might have unfolded laundry in your bedroom. You, um, you might have like clothes piled up things that um, don't belong in the bedroom in the bedroom. So we kind of go through different areas, different things you can do in the bedroom to keep it um, a little bit more of a, like a more neat, tidy area. Um, one thing that's really helpful is to kind of start by looking at where the dust is collecting in your room or why there's dust in your room. Um, making sure that you have clean vents in, in your bedroom is helpful doing a really good vacuuming and vacuuming under the furniture, behind the furniture, pulling things out. Um, our, be our bedrooms tend to be pretty neglected that way. Putting um, uh, like pillowcase protect, pillow protectors on your pillows, mattress protectors that keeps it, um, the dust mites down and all that. Also laundering your sheets weekly is helpful for keeping the dust down if you use um, like down pillows or down comforters, you're gonna have a little bit more dust. So you just need to make sure that you are um, vacuuming and laundering that bedding routinely too. Um, if you are looking for a way to make your bedroom feel better when you are in your bedroom, I always like recommend a book or two on the edge of your, on the, like on a nightstand so that you have something to read and I, in the book, I recommend not having phones just because it's nice to be able to go into your bedroom and just like unplug. I know a lot of people use their phones with their alarms and, or you might need it in case someone were to call you. So there's, but if you uh, can kind of think of your bedroom as a place to unplug and unwind a book, a dish by your bedside table with lotion or um, uh like uh, um, lip gloss, whatever, like, it's always nice to have like kind of a pampering spot by your by your bed too. Um, so those are just kind of some things I talk about, I share DIY recipes in the book, you, there's a recipe for a fabric refresher. So if you wanted to like, freshen up your pillows or your bedding, you could um, do the, uh, the recipe in there, I'll tell you what it is real quick. 
Um, but it's a half a cup of water, a quarter of a cup of vodka or rubbing alcohol, and then 10 drops of lavender essential oil. You put it in a small spray bottle, shake it up, and then you can spray your, your pillows, your bedding. You could spray the air if you wanted to, to freshen it up a little bit too, but it's, um, it's a nice way to uh, freshen up the bedroom. So once we are done with the bedroom, we go into linens and laundry and we talk about the laundry room, um, all the different things that surround our pain points with laundry, which are typically huge. <laughs> uh, I think everyone struggles with laundry in some way or another. If you have not figured out how to do laundry or how to stay on top of it, you'll love this chapter because um, I talk about how to do laundry every day, why you might want to do a lot of laundry every day. It might sound ridiculous. I, I understand that. That's fine. But if you have enough laundry to do a load every day, I recommend it. It's so much easier than doing all of your laundry on one day or saving it for the weekend. It takes so much less time to take care of and put away. You just need to like try it for a week and see, um, see what happens and how that, um, if I can change your mind <laughs> with that, um, a couple other like laundry related tips is I recommend using, um, uh, like one small basket or hamper per person, especially with kids. If you have them using a smaller basket for them is so much easier because then when you're teaching them how to do their own laundry, it's not so overwhelming for them either. Um, I recommend um, like teaching your kids how to do their own laundry at a young age, if you can. Um, and then I also, I think it's easier to separate clothing by person because then that makes it easier with the different baskets too, because then you're actually taking, um, you're not having to sort multiple times. Like you have to sort through socks and shirts and whatever else that you have in that load, but you don't have to so sort through each person's as well. So I, that's, that's how I recommend doing that. Um, I also talk about different ways to fold things, different ways to fold sheets and towels, um, shirts. We talk about um, like using like some tips for laundry stains, um, different things that you can do that way as well. I always keep a, a stick of um, like chalkboard chalk in the laundry room in that way like if you get a little like a grease stain or an oil stain on a shirt you can just draw on it that will absorb the oil and then launder it as usual and typically that will come out so it's kind of just a good laundry room tip um after linens and laundry we go into living spaces and we talk about um how clutter can build up on those surfaces what we can do to um, keep it so that we're not building the clutter up in those surfaces as well. And also just um, keeping our living areas uh, neat and tidy and nice spaces for us. Um, I also recommend if you're wanting to work in an area in your, or like in a living area or any area of your home, just do one spot, one area at a time. Don't empty out a whole room and then try to go back to it, just work section by section, um, uh, surface by surface. It's so much easier uh, to do that, um, at least to me. If you are, uh, if you have kids, think about ways that you can include their toys. And uh, I've always thought that it's easier to have it look more like if you put toys in a basket and then on a bookshelf, when the toys are put away, it does not look like a toy room or like a uh, toy store. It can still remain like um, an adult, <laughs> an adult space. Um, so that that's just something easy. If you, I also talk about doing a toy library. So if you have small children and you feel like they get bored easily or they don't play with things long enough, it's really helpful to put to, do, to put 
some of those toys away. So separate things out by type. Like, so if you had like Duplos or Magnetiles or animals, you'd put them in their own box bin, basket, whatever. And then just bring out a couple one week, take those away, bring some other ones out the next week so that they don't have so many choices. Kids tend to play better and more thoroughly longer with, um, with that. So, um, after the living spaces, we go into the office and paperwork and we talk about all the struggles that there are with um, paperwork and office and how to store things. Um, I talk about an in and out basket, how helpful that is when you are starting uh, to organize your paperwork, just having a place to put things that you need to deal with in that in basket and then things that you are done with in that out basket. Just that simple separation is helpful. Um, I also talk about when you come in from uh, bringing your mail in, dealing with it right away rather than stacking it up. That is just a little, like a daily task that I do. Um, we also go into the entryway and mudroom and kids' rooms and spaces. So beyond just those living areas, we talk about kids' bedrooms, how to work through those as well. And let's see, what else do we have? We have garages and basements, vehicles. And then the last chapter is my cleaning routine, which I'll kind of briefly talk to you about here. It is super simple. There are four parts to it. The first part are the daily tasks. Those are the things that I recommend doing daily. And that's where I always recommend starting. Um, and this is a cleaning routine for anyone. I have used this in all different stages at all different degrees of busy, all different ages of kids, no kids. And I've tweaked it. I have thousands, millions, I don't know, many people around the world that do the cleaning routine, have success with it and really love how it works in their homes. So their five daily tasks are to make the beds, check the floors. So you are not vacuuming every day, but if you need to do a quick vacuum or a quick sweep, you can do that. Um, wiping counters. This is like kitchen counters at the end of dinner or meals, checking your bathroom counters. If something needs to be wiped up, doing a quick, the, th the fourth one is declutter. You're doing a quick declutter every day, putting things away. Um, you could be working on a clutter area if you wanted to, like if you were going through paperwork every day, you could spend, you set a timer and spend five or 10 minutes and go through the paperwork. However you want to use that um, daily task um, is up to you. And then the fifth daily task is to do laundry every day. So those five daily tasks, once you start to implement them, they will really make a difference in your home, but then you, then you're going to be ready for those weekly tasks. Those are the things that are um, like Monday is cleaning the bathrooms, Tuesday is dusting day, Wednesday is vacuuming day, Thursday is um, washing floors, Friday is catch all day. That is also, as I said before, the day that I um, do grocery shopping, meal planning, and then Saturday is sheets and towels. Sunday, we just do the daily tasks and relax. And those are um, super helpful when they're implemented with the daily tasks though it, your home will be clean most of the time because you're touching on all the different areas of your home all week long. Um, then I also talk about rotating tasks. Those are like deep cleaning tasks. I recommend that you do um, monthly, they change, but if you are ready for like the deep cleaning tasks, then you would add those in. And then the monthly focus is an organizing area. So every month is like just an area of the home that you concentrate on organizing, like um, January is um, the whole house declutter. February is uh, um, kitchens. March is spring cleaning. There are just things that help. Um, so you're deep cleaning, deep organizing your home all year long as well. So those are, that's the routine. That is a pretty good breakdown of the book. And um, of course there's like more than that. <laughs> There's also um, DIY recipes in the back of the book as well. So you'll find my favorites for the glass cleaning spray, all purpose dis disinfecting, a floor cleaning spray. Um, what else? There's a handful of different recipes here. The, a bathroom scr a scrub, 
nightly sink scrub, shower spray, and I think there's one more page here too. And then soft cleaning paste. So there's, um, the book is full of great ideas, different ways for you to um, be in your home and enjoying it in a new and different way. And actually like finding some, um, some peace there as well. So with that, do you guys have um, any questions at all for me? Hi, Becky. Yeah, we, we do have some questions in the chat. So I will just share them with you. Um, well, someone writes that she's a grandma with a basement of toys and what would be a good organizing system. I know you started to talk about um, some toy tips. Um, but how about I guess it's maybe just what about basements in general. Do you have some tips about kind of the basement in general? And, and yeah, I think if you basements, I always think of like plastic tubs being really helpful just because if there's ever um, a leak or anything like that, it's in basements. I mean, my basement is not finished. So I want to keep any bugs or spider webs <laughs> out of it, out of, out of those things. So I definitely go with a tub. If you have a finished basement, you know, you might have something different, but I think a toy library would be great. Um, and definitely like a book basket or a book bin that you could um, have as well. It would be really helpful. Great. Okay. Let's see. Um, we have a question from someone who would like to know, can you talk about ways to combat clutter? Yeah, I think that the best way to combat clutter is to deal with it daily. So by taking care of every single day, choosing an area, it, it can be something as simple as just starting with your mail. I have found that, so like this week, like for the next week, just open up your mail and deal with it when you come in, okay? And then build on that. So once you've got that little small thing down, then start to look at other areas of your home and think of ways that you can um, declutter. You can even make a list of areas that you feel are cluttered in your home. You might have five things, you might have 30. And then every day set a timer for 10 minutes and work on one of those areas and then cross it off as you um, finish it and uh, make a resolution to not clutter it back up. Okay, uh, let's see. Someone would like to know, do you use four separate cleaning buckets for the bathroom? So if you have four bathrooms, do you have four buckets? I have one that I use um, and I just take that same one to all the bathrooms. The main thing is that I am, I have, a, I'll usually have like 12 cleaning cloths for each, like each sink or each toilet. And then uh, that's like the main thing that you're going to have a lot of, but I just do one bucket. If you would prefer to have, some people prefer using like one bathroom cleaning caddy and keeping it in the bathroom. That works too. I used to do that when my kids were smaller and I was would clean the bathroom while they were um, bathing. So you can kind of decide how, um, what works best for you. But my recommendation is just one. Okay. Someone writes with a question. She says she, she tries to air dry many of her clothes and always using a drying rack. How can she keep the bathroom cleaner when clothes are on the rack and it looks messy? I, I Have you ever seen um, like a wall mounted um, drying rack. I have one in my laundry room. I actually have it on my favorites page on my website. If you wanted to look at it, it's from Ballard designs, but you can mount it on the wall and pull it out. And then when you're not using it, you push it back in. So it just looks like, like three things of wood. Um, I don't, that would be my recommendation. Okay. What about cleaning out your fridge? When you, you talked about you clean your fridge every week. So does that mean you are actually like taking out each of the shelves and the drawers or are you just wiping it down with a cloth? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I am just wiping it down with a cloth. Um, I like once a month, I'll usually take, take things out and kind of take it apart or as needed. Sometimes it doesn't need it every month. Sometimes it does. Like after Christmas, with so, we had so much food and um, New Year's and everything. So it, there was definitely more, it needed a good deep cleaning, but like this month there probably won't need to be you know, emptied out. So it's more as needed, but definitely just a quick wipe down um, weekly before I um, fill it back up. Someone has another question. I'm not sure if this is your area of expertise or not, but she wants to know about dealing with emails. Like, I know this isn't the house, but it is in our computers and that can be really overwhelming. So do you have suggestions about that? 
I do. That is something that I talk about quite a bit um, just from, because it's clutter. And even though it's not like visual, it's still visual. <laughs> or I guess if it's not physical clutter, but it's, you know, visual mental clutter. Um, I recommend, I try to zero out my email weekly. So I will go through and like, usually Friday is my day to do that with and I have like a work email account and a personal email account, but I will try to get that as close to zero as I possibly can. I use folders. That is how, so I will, um, for instance, we've been going back and forth at the library. So there's a library folder, the library Zoom, and everything goes into that folder. Um, and then it's not in my inbox stacked up. Um, that's definitely something that's the folders and the email is to me the secret because you can, even if, you, if you're not done with it yet, as long as you name it something that you will remember and associate with what you need, it's out of your inbox and like so much help, more helpful. <laughs> you can also archive emails too. Um, so if it's something that you're like, I don't know, I might need this, I might not, you can archive it. And if it doesn't feel like it's you know, important enough to even file. Okay, so now we have some specific questions about cleaning. So if someone would like to know, what is the best product for cleaning the grout in a shower? Yeah, I, there's a couple different things. I have a, a, a blog post. If you were to search grout on cleanmama.com, you'd see directions for that. Um, I either recommend using cream of tartar. Um, it works really well if you make it with a paste with water and you just scrub it with a scrub brush that will whiten up your grout. I also recommend oxygen whitener, which is um, a non, like a um, chlorine free powder, like OxyClean. I sell oxygen whitener in my shop, but it's um, very similar. And it has hydrogen peroxide. It's like dried hydrogen peroxide, essentially. You mix it with water and it makes a paste and that does a really good job whitening. Um, you can also use um, like, just a scrub brush and like a steel soap, depending on you know where you're at with, um, if it's just soap scum, that will work really well um, to remove that because it does not, it's like a plant-based, because steel soap is a plant-based soap. So it does a good job with that too. How would you recommend cleaning the coils in the back of a refrigerator? Yep, you're gonna have to pull it out and you're gonna have to vacuum, pull it out, unplug it, and then vacuum it with, uh, um, like a nozzle attachment on your vacuum cleaner. There, okay. It's not fun, but not fun at all. <laughs> How often do you do that? Um, <laughs> okay, I want it. Whenever okay. we need to, like yeah. we've had a, the refrigerator we have right now, you can't do it with it. And I was like, yes. <laughs> okay. How would you clean a stainless steel dishwasher? I guess they're about like, it's a brush you know, stainless steel yeah. on the outside, what mm -hmm. would you use to clean that? Yeah, it's surprisingly, you can use white vinegar on stainless steel. If you, you can spray it on a microfiber cloth and if you go in the direction of the stainless steel, it like uh, there's a grain on your stainless steel. Generally, they're gonna run horizontally. So you would wipe this way. Occasionally you'll see stainless steel that has a, a vertical um, grain on it. But um, yeah, that's what I, that's how I clean it. You can, if you need a little bit of like polishing, you can put a little bit of um, even olive oil or avocado oil, which sounds strange, but just a little teeny tiny bit on a paper towel and you can buff that on it and it will shine it right up too. But that's how, that's how I recommend doing uh, stainless steel. It's cheap and easy and it works really well. Someone's asking about cleaning granite countertops. Um, she's asking about something called oxygen whitener. Um, or just in general, how would you recommend cleaning granite countertops? Yeah, I have a recipe. It's in the book. It's called the stone cleaning spray. And it is, um, it's also on my website too, if you wanted to find it, but it is, let me see where it, it's just water and rubbing alcohol, um, and like a drop or two of dish soap. And it's probably one of my favorite cleaning recipes. It works great on granite, marble, stone, uh, quartz, um, but it's, that's a, that's a really good one. And, um, that's how I clean them. I, the oxygen whitener is a powder in my, um, my shop. It's generally used for laundry and then also for cleaning too. 
I think we went through most of the questions because some of them you covered in your presentation. People were asking about, you know, dust and how to manage that. You already talked about that. So I think a lot, some of these other questions I think you covered. Um, so I think we had some really great questions. So um, Becky, thank you so much for sharing all these tips with us. It was fantastic. Um, Beth and Grace, if you want to join us again so we can kind of just um, see everybody for a minute. And um, we just want to make sure that you, everyone knows that there's the link to the book stall um, for purchasing books. They're signed copies of the book. Um, and we'll put up, try to put up a slide also with the, um, with the link as well. Um, so Becky, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. It was so great to see you and um, to be with you all today. Thanks for coming. And thank you for everyone for joining us at home. Oh, I see the slides up now. So um, here's the link for the book stall. You can call or go online and they will make sure you get a copy of Becky's book um, that is signed, which is always nice to have the author sign your, your copy of your book. Um, so thank you to everyone for joining us today. We hope you walked away with lots of good ideas and uh, ways to keep your home peaceful. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.